Good morning, and welcome to St. John on the Desert. I'm Pastor Leslie. And I'm Marcia Soriano. Today is World Communion Sunday. Around the world, people gather to break bread and pour wine. And so we gather with them in heart and mind. Around the world, the broken body is made whole. As part of that body, we join in its unity. Around the world, the banquet of God is prepared for the table. We, who share in the banquet, come eagerly to be fed. Let us share God's bounty. Let us prepare to worship God. Part of what happens when we come to worship is on behalf of humanity, we confess. So let us take this moment and lift the universe and the world to God. With open ears, we come as a global people to admit that the world is not as it should be, God. We carefully cleared out all the stones and planted only the best vines. We thought we did everything right, or so we have told ourselves again and again. There are things that we have chosen to believe because we didn't want to see the violence or corruption. We wanted to believe there was enough and that all people were working for good until this year of disease and uncertainty. Our hope is harder and harder to hold on to. Our faith is under pressure, and we need your grace to rain down. Wash us in your love so that we can dare to dream of the world we can build. Take this moment and lift your own burden to God. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh the good news we are forgiven and for that we give thanks to God in the 1760s Britain was deep in debt so the British Parliament imposed a series of taxes on American colonists to help pay those debts. The Stamp Act taxed colonists on virtually every piece of printed paper they used, from playing cards and business licenses to newspapers and legal documents. 
The Townsend Acts went a step further, taxing essentials such as paint, glass, and tea. On December 16, 1773, in Boston, Massachusetts, American colonists, frustrated and angry at Britain for imposing taxation without representation, dumped 342 chests of tea imported by the British East India Company into the harbor. The event was the first major act of defiance to British rule over the colonists. Today's scripture is another act of defiance, although it happened in first century Palestine and was committed not by hundreds of protesters, but by one man, Jesus. From the 22nd chapter of Matthew, verses 15 through 22. The Pharisees laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. This is the word of the Lord. It's his final week on earth. Jesus has entered Jerusalem to the hosannas of adoring crowds. He's overturned the money changers' tables in the temple, and he's, sold, he's told several provocative parables calling into question the integrity of the authorities. Two political religious factions form a temporary truce in order to trap the upstart rabbi. The question they ask is quite clever. Is it lawful to pay the imperial tax that funds the Roman occupation of Jerusalem? If Jesus answered yes, the adoring crowds would most likely turn against him. If he answered no, he'd be guilty of sedition. Jews paid lots and lots of taxes, but this tax, the imperial tax, was particularly unjust. Like the taxes imposed on the Americans by Britain, this tax paid for the occupation of the city. The Jews could have their temple worship in Jerusalem, but they were taxed to support the Roman Empire. It's as if all prisoners were made to pay the salaries of their guards. Jesus requests a coin and then asks whose image is upon it. The Pharisees reply, it's Caesar. But I bet they were thinking that this guy wasn't as smart as everybody said he was. And then without missing a beat, Jesus says, let Caesar have his itty bitty little coin. Everything belongs to God anyway. Jesus is inviting the crowds around him and us to declare our allegiance to God. He's teaching us the difference between being citizens of the state and citizens of heaven. There are elements in our life that are indeed part of the world order and should be rendered to Caesar or, in our case, the IRS. Schools and roads must be built. Our military must be maintained. Children must be cared for. And we got to eat. But these are just little itty bitty superficial parts of who we are. Our deepest selves belong to God. 
It's stewardship season. And once again, we are asking you to claim your identity as a child of God and make a financial commitment to your church. Financial stewardship is not just a number you write down on the estimate of giving card. It's the symbol of your allegiance to the one who created you, the one to whom you gratefully give all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. St. John has been blessed with faithful givers and generous stewards, and I encourage you to remain so. I invite you to prayerfully make decisions about your pledge that will let giving become for you a joy. For my entire working life, I have paid quarterly taxes as a self-employed individual. Four times a year, I grumpily write a check to the Infernal Revenue Service. I love my country but I'd prefer to see my dollars reflect my priorities as an artist, a humanitarian, an environmentalist, and a person of faith. The checks I write to St. John, on the other hand, bring me great happiness because I know the money is being spent wisely, carefully, and in accordance with God's dream for our human community. Long after Caesar is gone, God will be. No human power can dislodge God, displace God, or challenge God's claims on our hearts. Because God made us in God's image. We are God's money, and we should be spent. As money circulates, we should circulate. As money goes from hand to hand, we should go from hand to hand. Money should be used. We should be used. Risk being used by God, and I promise you, the end will be glory. Amen. Today, Marcia and I are in honor of World Communion Sunday, are going to sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as our Father, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Hi kids, I'm Pastor Leslie. And I'm Mr. Dean. And today I'm talking about stewardship. Do you know what stewardship is, Mr. Dean? Uh... I think it's about raising money to run the church. That's exactly what it is. We ask people to make a, a commitment to their church financially so that we can pay for the things that a church needs to pay for. Oh, like candles. Well, use a lot of candles. That, well, that's not really a big expense. The bread for communion. Well, that's also another sort and of... And the wine. You get good wine, <laughs> it comes in a can. 
No, it's, it's uh, those are minor expenses. Uh, the church really has some pretty significant things that they pay for. Uh, like the water bill. Let's not talk about the water bill. Or lot, keeping the lights on, oh, air, conditioning. air conditioning, heat in the winter, maintenance, maintenance. Yeah. all of these are, sure. are significant oh, costs. Oh, pastor's salary. Well, yeah. <laughs> and of course, all the mission work that we do. You know, during the pandemic, Mr. Dean, we've been sending money faithfully to our mission partners. Good to Youth on Their Own, the Food Bank, to Casa Maria's Soup Kitchen, soup kitchen. Yeah. Old oh, Pueblo. yes, our yeah. family services, yeah. Yeah. Youth on Their Own, I think I said that already. We've been really taking care of our mission partners in their time of greatest need. And that's what a church can do with the dollars that you send to support it. Thank you. Amen. And so we gather our hearts around this table. We come from many places. We are different ages, different orientations, different political parties, different religions. As our hearts come together around this table, we celebrate those differences as a blessing because the more differences we bring, the more fully we experience the presence of the sacred in our midst. So come, children of God, just as you are. Wherever you are on this journey of life, you are welcome here in this place, here in this community, here at this table. This meal reaches back through the centuries. This table reaches around the world. This week I asked you to share with me some of the places in the world you wanted us to pray for on World Communion Sunday. And here are the places you lifted up in prayer. I'd like prayer for Mexico, that someday the citizens may be safe and free in worship, living and working in their homeland. Three of you asked for prayers for Mexico. Please pray for the tiny island nation of Bermuda. Two people ask prayers for Lebanon, whose citizens have been severely impacted from the explosions and food is difficult to obtain. Pray for the peaceful climate warriors who bring awareness and real change to saving our home planet and for our children, our grandchildren, and their heirs to come. Pray for the long-standing conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Prayers for George and Bernie Zimmerman moving to their new home in Chandler and praying for all the people in the West whose lives have been impacted by those fires. Pray for the unseen, the bicyclists, children in crosswalks or cages, refugees, those in prison who were falsely accused of minor offenses, those who are unseen because of medical conditions. And let us pray for hope for our bruised world, for those who fear needlessly and turn to radical violent acts. Pray for education that will teach critical, skeptical thinking and pray for a sense of community during isolation and for our government to finally recognize our world is getting drier and hotter. Play prayers for our planet, the Amazon rainforest that's being plundered, the polar regions, the loss of critical habitat for so many species of plants animals and people, 
all over the world. For the suffering of innocence caught up in war and its aftermath. For those who suffer for being different or for worshiping differently. And for our country, we seem to have lost our way and put the very institutions we say we hold dear in grave danger. This is the last one. Pray prayers for the people of China. May they know religious freedom. May they know what it means to worship God peacefully and openly. This is the world we pray for each day. This is the world in need of God's love and attention. And so, please join me as we pray for the world. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you be with all the citizens of your precious, fragile planet Earth. May you hear the cries of your children in war zones, in climate change crisis, in wildfires. May you hear the cries of your children living in oppression, living with resources slowly disappearing. May you hear our voices. And may you know that people all over the world are gathering around their communion tables this day to celebrate, to pray on behalf of one another as we are praying for them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is also a table of remembrance. We remember the stories that Jesus' friends told, stories of bread broken and shared, feeding a multitude, Stories of being gathered together, enemy and friend around tables. Stories of unlikely guests revealing the face of the sacred. They say that it was on a night both full of celebration and betrayal that he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it and shared it with his friends, reminding them and us that it is in the bread, the breaking, that we become whole in losing our lives that we find them, in serving that we are served. As the grain scattered becomes one loaf, when we eat this bread, we become one with each other. They say that he took the cup, he poured it out, blessed it, and shared it, remembering with them the life-giving breath that even now pounds through our veins, the breath of life from whence we come, the breath that precedes and follows all that we can see. As the grapes find life in the vine, when we drink this cup, we become one with the source of life itself. Come, Holy Spirit, come, bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking, that our eyes might be open, that we might recognize the risen Christ in our midst, indeed, in one another. Let us feast with the entire world, praying for peace, praying for shalom. wondrous God of infinite love and boundless compassion, mark our hearts with the seal of your handiwork. Create within us the joy of being in your presence.
stitch our souls the desire to serve, the power to heal, and the capacity to love deeply and genuine, genuinely mold us into reservoirs of hope that we might pour out your bountiful blessings upon all your people. May this time at your table unite us in the community of saints who know your love and proclaim your son with zeal and grace to a broken and hurting world. May your healing hands be the salve for ending hurt and violence in this world, even as we prepare for the next. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. As people who have been fed, go now into the world and feed others. As those who have been given hope, go out into the world and share that hope with others. And always remember, we are never cut off from the source of life. The bread of life, the true vine, is with us always. Be at peace until we meet again. Amen. I forgot.